Hello, this video covers how I print with the Iazo Zero 3D printer. So I use a custom made porcelain clay that I mix from raw ingredients, but you could just use a regular porcelain clay throwing body and soften it by adding plenty of water. And you can see the clay is so soft, it's uh, sticking to my hands and leaving clay all over me. Um, that lets me know I'm at a good consistency. It should be really squishy, kind of like toothpaste. I keep it wrapped in large coils to make it easy to load into the cartridge. I've got some porcelain that I've dyed with red iron oxide um, that I'm cutting here that I'll layer in between chunks of the white unstained porcelain uh, to kind of create an ombre effect in my print. So I'll take a chunk here of the white porcelain and then sandwich uh, a chunk of the red in between uh, kind of balling it up to make sure i don't get any uh, air bubbles or minimize air bubbles that is take another chunk of a, a white porcelain and squash it on top here so i'll take that whole mass and kind of roll it and squish it together again trying to minimize any sort of Grooves that could become air bubbles once I load it into the cartridge. And you can see it's really sticky and messy. And it just makes a total mess, so I'm constantly washing my hands off. All right, so take the cartridge. If I add a little water, I find the clay slides around in there a little easier. So it'll slide on down nice and easily. And I smack it a few times uh, downwards and then on the side uh, to make sure I'm getting it all the way down in there. So I find if I smack it to the side, it leaves plenty of air space that when I smack it downwards, it'll slide all the way down to minimize the air bubbles. I have a big cushion that I smack it on some more, again, to really squish it down to the bottom of that cartridge to help minimize those air bubbles. And I'm just kind of smacking it again on the side and the front until I feel like it's all down all the way in there. And then inevitably, I have to add a little bit more clay. So I'll take a couple more balls of clay and just toss them down in there and really squish them in there. Again, this clay is super soft. You can see making a real mess. If the clay is too stiff, it will jam up the printer and you'll be really frustrated. So uh, make sure it's nice and soft. So I have this dowel rod too that I, or this clay tool. It's like a big dowel. It's just about a little narrower than the inside of the cartridge that I can use to kind of shove in there and really push uh, the clay deeper into the cartridge. And if using the dowel, I can push the clay through the cartridge, not the nozzle. That lets me know that it's soft enough. If it's soft enough that I can push it through the nozzle, it's soft enough the machine will be able to push it through the nozzle. Okay, so I got the back end piece there. And I'm pushing that in and I keep all those little bits and just soaked in water all the time when I'm printing. So the nozzle parts and the little uh, back end part, I just keep in a bucket of water. Okay, so I got the little quick release thing there. And I find it's really important to make sure that's really well cleaned out. So I'll use a toothbrush and get all the little bits of clay out of there and a sponge and make sure that it's clicking easily and it's springing back so that it's gonna get a good connection to the uh, hose. Again, just making sure that it's really springing around. And so I'll keep that soaking in water all the time when I'm printing. And then when I'm not printing, I'll make sure it's really clean before it all dries out. Because if clay dries out in those little parts, it's really hard to get out. So I got my extruder here. Again, I, I clean it out in between prints. Um, just because again, if any clay gets a little dry in there, it's gonna jam up the start of your next print. So like overnight, I'll make sure to clean it all out. And then all day during, you know, while I'm printing, I'll just, you know, keep pushing fresh clay through it. So I never want the clay to sit in there longer than maybe an hour or so. Otherwise it'll start to get stiff too quick. So I got my nozzles and my extruder head all cleaned out and ready to go. Okay, so now I'm putting it onto the extruder. Okay. Get it all threaded on there and then getting that front plate on. And I find it's really important that it's well centered on that front plate. So it's tough to see in this video uh, angle, but I made sure it's well aligned as I tighten it on there. Okay, putting the extruder back together. 
So take the threaded screw off. And I'm going to put some fresh grease in there. So I find that make sure that little grease seal or oil seal uh, that it's got fresh grease in there is really important. Helps kind of resist the clay from squishing back up in there. And if there's any clay in that, I'll clean that out. So I just I just use a, any old grease. My neighbor is a mechanic, so I was able to get some grease from him. So make sure that's all on there nice. And you can see I've added a small heat sink to my extruder just to kind of help keep it cool. And there's one on the putter motor as well. So I find those things get real hot. So I had some extra heat sinks lying around that I threw on there. So getting the uh, extruder on there, and I'm just making sure that it's well aligned with that screw. I found my screw got bent, or the extruder kind of got bent at one point. So if it's not screwed, threaded just right, it doesn't uh, stay aligned in the middle. So I'm really eyeball that as I put it on. And then uh, the little adapter part there. Again, I keep that soaking in water, so no clay gets dried or stiff inside of it. And then finally the nozzle itself. I'm just using the nozzles that came with the machine, um, but I bought some other ones that I haven't yet to experiment with. Okay, once I get the extruder on the machine, I'm going to start with the back putter and advance clay into the tube. Um, once the clay is coming out the tube easily, uh, I will stop the back putter, uh, let any excess clay come out, and then attach it to the printer or the extruder itself, and then start the print putter function and run the print putter function until clay is coming out the extruder nozzle itself. Um, and I'll just run that until clay starts coming out and then I'll stop it, clean off that clay. And you can see also I'm getting a slab of clay ready. So I got a fresh wear board and I got that little slab of clay and that slab of clay is maybe two millimeters thick, an eighth of an inch thick or so. And so I find printing on a slab of clay is gonna give my, my print a really nice thick bottom. It adds a little more strength. Um, also guarantees that it won't leak. I found sometimes if I print it without that slab of clay, uh, just the two layers, um, two or three layers, sometimes there'd be a small little micro hole in the bottom and it would leak. So I'll get that slab on there and I'm sealing the edges of the slab to the wear board, a little bit of water and then just kind of gently pressing down to make sure it doesn't move around. And it's really important that it's flat. So I got my little miniature roller using that to flatten it all out. Before I zero the printer to the surface of the slab. So I'll have that printer nozzle zeroed out to just above the piece of paper, the uh, piece of clay, the slab of clay, um, about high enough that a piece of paper could slide underneath or so easily. Okay, securing the wear board down to the printer bed. Get some alligator clips, and here we are getting that printer all zeroed out and right in the center of my slab. And so I'll just adjust those little knobs under the printer bed, right, to get it all zeroed out. So that nozzle is just above the slab of clay. And then getting my printer, or my, uh, my print selected there, the model, and starting the print process. So I'll clean off any a little bit of clay on the nozzle before it starts going on that first layer. Uh, if everything looks good and I'll kind of visually check that first layer and if I think the back or the front is a little thicker or thinner I adjust those knobs live until I feel like it's the same thickness as it's printing and that looks pretty good to me or maybe one more turn <laughs> just adjusting that live as it's printing that first layer making sure that the extrusion looks the same thickness front to back from left to right and you can see it's starting with that uh red iron soap porcelain so it's kind of print pink color all right we'll pan up here and you can see i've got a 
blow dryer, an old blow dryer mounted right above my printer. And I'll turn that on and it's just the cold setting. So I'm not using any heat. There's cold air forced straight down on the print. And now we'll get that third layer of the bottom started. So I do three layers on the bottom on top of that slab. Or actually, I think only two. Take that back. Only two layers on the bottom. And then I'm doing one layer on the walls. And here we go. A little bit into the print. And I add, I'm adding water to the edges of that slab. Because the blow dryer is drying out that slab. And I don't want it to curl or crack. So I found if I just totally ignore it, it'll crack or curl and it'll cause problems with the print or it could uh, unattach from the wear board. So just keeping the edges wet, uh, make sure it adheres the whole time to the wear board. Further on with that print, just come back once in a while and check in it. So, you know, I'm running this printer while I'm doing other tasks in my studio, making pots in other ways, not using the printer. I print these twisted vases in the printer. And I've got that blow dryer on like a lower setting because I don't want it to dry it too fast. If it dries it too fast, uh, it can actually shrink the layers and you'll tell that uh, a layer shrunk compared to the other ones because the clay is so wet. So once it shrinks, it really does change in size. So just in a nice low cold setting to help dry out the clay a little bit faster. So again, these are different video clips of printing the same vase. This one doesn't have any of that red in it, but print's all done. Really carefully slide it off the printer. I've ruined too many prints, pulling it off uh, willy nilly. And then immediately I start printing another object right away. So I have another slab with a, on a board ready to go. And I know I can print one of those large vases and a couple small vases off the cartridge. I can't do two large vases off one cartridge. So here I am just getting ready to set up another print right away. And I stamp my name into the bottom of those slabs. So I try to make sure to position the printer head in the middle of the slab where I stamped the bottom of it. So here. I'm stamping the bottom of the slab with my name. And then I'll flip it over, put a little X where my stamp is. That way I know where the uh, printer head should be centered on. So nifty little trick if you want to sign your work with a stamp. And there I am sealing that slab down to the printer head and adding a little water to make sure it stays sealed. And getting another print started right away. So I hope this video helped out. Um, feel free to message me on the Facebook group at any time uh, about using the printer. I'm hoping to get my printer running again soon and make some new objects and maybe some more uh, video tutorials if this helped you out. All right, thanks and good luck printing with clay.